let's go ahead and get started with our next story, which is RFK Jr. might be giving Joe Biden a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a problem. And here's the thing. It's Joe Biden's fault. It's his own fault because of something that the Democratic Party decided to do that's actually looks like it could work against him, not in his favor. Now, if you are not aware, it was announced that the Biden administration has taken upon to young people to push Biden's 2024 run on TikTok. Now, this video has been trending like crazy. I'm going to show you two Gen Z uh, TikTokers, TikTokeroos, whatever you want to call them, how they are trying to pump up other young people to vote for Joe Biden in 2024. They're trying to, uh, hey, here's two young people, other young people, listen to them. They're trying to use uh, that method. And then a friend of mine made a parody of this video. So let me show you the original video first, because this was too funny to me. And I know a lot of people are making fun of this already. Um, Gen Z, this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to come out and vote for Biden. They're trying to use your own demographic against you. Listen to this. What the Republican Party doesn't understand about Gen Z is we don't like you. You claim you want to appeal to Gen Z, but you call us stupid. You say we're dumb. You say we're indoctrinated. I promise it's a losing strategy. And Gen Z is watching the Republican Party extremely closely as they destroy our environment, take rights away from women, do nothing about kids being shot in schools. And if they think they can give the middle finger to our generation and get away with it, they're sorely mistaken. What the Republican Party doesn't understand about Gen Z is we don't like you. Okay, so hold on to that, right? So he's calling out the Republican Party, okay? Now, some of the things that he mentioned or they mentioned in reference to the Republican Party, yes, I agree to the person in the comment. I think these guys are actors. Uh, some of those things can apply to the Democratic Party as well. And so a friend of mine Big mad crab, you got to give props for this. I can't believe he did this. <laughs> He's a part of Indie News Network. So he said, Gen Z won't sit back and watch as the Democratic Party tries to destroy the country. He said, had to use my white boy powers for good. Listen to this. This is too funny. <laughs> Democratic Party doesn't understand about Gen Z is that we don't like you. Claim you want to appeal to Gen Z, but you call us stupid. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. You call us privileged. The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> I promise you, it's a losing strategy. And Gen Z is watching the Democratic Party extremely closely <laughs> as they continue to approve drilling contracts, refuse to codify a roll into law, and blow up major energy pipelines. And if they think they can give the middle finger to our generation and get away with it, they're sorely mistaken. <laughs> Democratic Party doesn't understand that. Um, Eric, can you, can you do it again? Can you do volume boost? Because there's some parts that I want to pause at. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Democratic Party doesn't understand about Gen Z is that... We don't like you claim you want to appeal to Gen Z, but you call. Thanks. Thanks. This is funny. And Big Mad Crab is in the chat. I just saw him a second ago. I don't know where he went. The Democratic Party doesn't understand about Gen Z is that we don't like you claim you want to appeal to Gen Z, but you call us stupid. What else do we know about this population? 18 through 24. They are stupid. Some of the same criticisms that those two guys had for the Republican Party. This is what I was saying. The Democratic Party has done this as well. So shout out to Big Mad Crab for catching this because I was like, oh, man, here he is. Big Mad Crab's in the chat. This is him uh, in the video. But this was hilarious. Let's go back in. You call us privilege. The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. I remember Joe Biden making that comment. I remember that. I promise you, it's a losing strategy. And Gen Z is watching the Democrat. Look at him flexing in the background. This is too funny. Democratic <laughs> Party extremely closely as they continue to approve drilling contracts, refuse to codify a roll into law, and blow up major energy pipelines. And if they think they can give the middle finger to our generation and get away with it, they're sorely mistaken. I'm 
sorry. But notice he just called out the things that the Democratic Party is doing now that is going to hurt the Gen Z generation, right? The oil drilling, the Willow Project, uh, not codifying Roe v. Wade into law. So that's what I was saying. What they said about the Republican Party, those things can also be applied to the Democratic Party as well. Again, the Democratic Party doesn't understand about Gen Z is that we... So yeah, it's a... <laughs> So why am I showing you that video besides the fact that it's hilarious? Because it appears that Joe Biden may have made a mistake. A while back, I told you that the Democratic Party had decided to make South Carolina the first primary state for 2024. And they said that their reason for that is the fact that there's more diversity there. And I called BS and I said that if it was about diversity, then states like Georgia or Maryland or New Jersey which are more diverse, those states would have been number one. But it wasn't about that. It was about the fact that South Carolina was the state that changed the race for Joe Biden in 2020 and put him on top. So that's what this is really about. Well, in doing that, what he did was demote New Hampshire and Iowa. And we can argue about whether or not we feel Iowa or New Hampshire is diverse. Obviously, there's a different demographic there. But this is all about political uh, play here. This was a game that they're trying to play to make sure that a weak, declined Joe Biden could be reelected. Doesn't look like this is going to work in his favor. Let's get into this article here. Why Biden may have to forfeit the first contest in his reelection bid to Marianne Williamson or RFK Jr. Here we go. President Biden just announced his reelection campaign, but he's already on track to sacrifice New Hampshire's famed primary to a fringe rival like Marianne Williamson or RFK Jr. Look at what they're doing. I told you this is a typical establishment media talking points. They're all using similar vocabulary. They're all using that word fringe to refer to other candidates. The unusual situation is one of Biden's own making. Thanks to the new primary calendar, the Democratic National Committee ratified at his behest in February, which seeks to demote Iowa and New Hampshire and prohibits candidates from campaigning or even putting their name on the ballot in a state that jumps the line. Here's the problem. New Hampshire and Iowa, both of which Biden lost in 2020, plan to disregard the DNC and hold their contest first anyway. Let me say this again. New Hampshire and Iowa plan to disregard the DNC and hold their contest first anyway, most likely forcing Biden to forfeit the first unofficial contest of 2020. So when the Democratic Party decided to make that change in reference to the order of the primary states, turns out New Hampshire and Iowa didn't like that too much. And this is their way of clapping back, so to speak. So the joke could be on Joe Biden. Now let's go on. The rules apply to Williamson and Kennedy as well, but they've indicated they're willing to accept the DNC's unspecified penalties for rule violations since they're running anti-establishment campaigns anyway. <laughs> While those contests will most likely be insequential to the delegate math of Biden's renomination, it may, nothing less, be embarrassing for the president of the United States to nominally lose to Williamson, a self-help author who has never held elective office, or Kennedy, an anti-jab activist with a famous last name. See how they're smearing them? They're, they keep doing this, right? And even though I don't agree, I don't approve anymore of this process of trying to put progressive through the Democratic Party, that doesn't mean that the media should get a pass with what they're doing. They are the only other Democrats in the race at the moment. While Biden's campaign would likely shrug off the outcome of contests it didn't even compete in, the situation could be nerve wracking for ever anxious Democrats and spark new questions about a bigger name Democrat to challenge Biden. So let me tell you how they reveal their self here, right? 
they were completely against Joe Biden having a challenger, right? Joe Biden gets two challengers. They're even more against it. But now because of this mess up that the Democratic Party has done, now they're actually willing to maybe be on board with a larger name. I'm going to add this word in there, establishment Democrat to challenge Joe Biden. You see how this works. It's about who they think is going to serve the status quo. And whoever is going to maintain the status quo and is not going to push back against the status quo, they will get behind that candidate. This is, has less to do with protecting Joe Biden and more to do with protecting the status quo in this country and protecting corporate America. This has to do with protecting the military industrial complex, protecting those powers that be. That is why all you have to do, if you swap out Biden with Joe Manchin, if you swap out Biden with Pete Buttigieg, they would get on board behind that too, because these are establishment corporate Democrats that are not going to push the envelope. And that's what they like. We still intend to have a presidential primary that will be first in the nation, says New Hampshire Secretary of State David Scanlon. Whether the president's campaign here or not is up to him. It's up to him whether he's going to place his name on the ballot or not. If he chooses not to place his name on the ballot, I'm sure there will be some New Hampshire Democratic voters who will write his name in. The new Democratic calendar moves up South Carolina, the state that revived Biden's candidacy in 2020, and demoted Iowa, where Biden finishes fourth, and New Hampshire, where he was fifth. And this is what I've said before, and I will continue to say, they can change the rules at any time. Next week, they could come back and say, uh, we changed our mind. We're moving Iowa and New Hampshire back up. This is the thing about the DNC. They don't play fair. They don't play fair. They're ruthless and they'll do whatever they can to back and promote the candidate. And I'm going to use this, this term that Kim gave me that is bankrolled. Typically the candidate that has the most money from the donors from corporate America, that's who they'll get behind. That's how it works with the DNC. The party said that New Hampshire could share the second slot with Nevada, but the state balked citing a law mandating that its primary take place a week before any other in the country. So basically New Hampshire was like, I'm not trying to share my food with Nevada. We are not sharing a sandwich. The sandwich is mine. You get your own sandwich and you come back the following week. They wanted them to share a spot. Share. A Biden campaign aide said advisors are aware that New Hampshire might jump the line and hope it does not, but are prepared to abide to any sanctions the DNC would impose if that were to happen. And then here you go. You got the DNC ready to implement sanctions on these states for trying to do what they have been doing before. Iowa, meanwhile, was just was just jettisoned, excuse me. Iowa, meanwhile, was jettisoned entirely from Democrats' early primary window, but that was expected after the fiasco of its 2020 caucuses in the state trending more red. New Hampshire Democrats, on the other hand, were shocked and outraged by the snub, warning it will undermine the party in the critical general election swing state. New Hampshire, my neighbor to the north, it's an interesting state. New Hampshire can be a mixed bag. And I've said this before, you think you know what they're gonna do and then they surprise you. Their motto is live free or die. So the fact that the Democratic Party actually thought that New Hampshire would take this sitting down and not push back or not try to fight back, they are obviously not aware with how voters actually feel in the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire's largest union announced Tuesday that it is not endorsing Biden, saying New Hampshire voters deserve a competitive Democratic primary. The prospect of a relatively easy win in either state could be enticing to an ambitious Democrat and has been a factor in both Williamson and Kennedy's campaign strategy. So this quote here from Marianne Williamson, your primary is going to happen on schedule. So whether or not the president participates, this is where it's going to happen.
Kennedy, whose family hails from neighboring Massachusetts, has repeatedly appealed to New Hampshire Democrats aggrieved by the snub, writing open letters and op-eds defending the state's primary. They have all kinds of, you know, tricks up their sleeve. But there's this article here from Time that I want you to hear because in reference to this issue with RFK Jr. and Joe Biden, I think there's something that you need to hear. Now, we all know, let's be realistic, the DNC is not going to give RFK Jr. the nomination. They're not going to give Marianne Williamson the nomination. They'll do whatever they can do to change the rules so that it doesn't happen. This is also why I believe people should run as independent. But that doesn't mean that RFK Jr. could not cause issues for Joe Biden. And let me explain to you why. This article here by the time, how RFK Jr. could lose badly, but still throw Biden off his game. Here we go. I'm actually going to make this uh, just a little bit larger because thank you. Thank you. President Joe Biden closed out his first week as an official 2024 candidate with plenty of reasons to feel good about the launch. On the eve of his declaration, he met with the so-called Tennessee Three for a photo op. Yes, because that's exactly all it was, just a photo op. <laughs> that reminded black voters of the White House efforts to protect democracy and encourage younger votes. Okay, whatever. Let's go on down here. Biden world may be riding high, but there is one nagging nuisance that has the potential to do more damage than they may appreciate. Two weeks ago, RFK Jr., the son of the 1968 presidential hopeful and nephew of the 35th president. Why didn't they just say their names? This part really threw me. Why didn't you just say, <laughs> why did they just say the son of Robert F. Kennedy? And the nephew of JFK, why didn't they just say that? Anyway, announced his, his plans to win the White House. Most serious Democrats have dismissed Kennedy as an inconvenience whose past flirtation with jab misinformation would eventually prove disqualifying. Notice how they say most serious, because apparently if you're challenging Joe Biden to his left, you're not considered serious. Those sage insiders are probably correct in their diagnosis. Only one incumbent elected president has ever lost renomination, and that was Franklin Pierce in 1852. Four other vice presidents who rose to president had been denied the nomination in their own right, and that last time that happened was 1884. That was President Lyndon Baines Johnson's 1968 bid, and his presidency really effectively ended after he had a shaky showing in New Hampshire's primary. There goes New Hampshire again. See, so they're bringing that back up. But past serious challengers have proven popular enough to throw incumbent presidents off their game. Former California Governor Ronald Reagan in 1976 primaried incumbent President Gerald Ford, who got the job only when Richard Nixon resigned. Senator Edward M. Kennedy, RFK Jr.'s uncle, primaried Jenny, Jimmy Carter uh, four years later. Why? Ted? We call him Ted. The fuck is Edward? Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Ted Kennedy. Maybe his, his real, his full name is Edward, but we call him Ted. Ted Kennedy primary challenge, Jimmy Carter. Anyway. And in 1992, activist Pat Buchanan tried to take out President George H.W. Bush. All of those challengers failed, but exposed intra-party divisions that helped to make each incumbent a one-term president. Listen to this piece. Now, at least at this point, RFK Jr. is no Reagan who won 24 primaries against Ford and amassed about 46% of the vote. But amid Biden's listless support within his own party, polling shows Kennedy hitting double digits. In fact, polls consistently show Democrats don't want Biden, the oldest person ever to do the job to seek a second term. If reelected, Biden would leave office at age 86. 
A stunning 52% of Democrats told AP, NORC, pollsters, Biden should not run again. And among all voters, that sentiment reaches 73%. The findings are in line with other surveys. And in there, this inconvenient fact, Biden himself is effectively barred from competing in Iowa and New Hampshire, which I just told you about. Let's go on down here. Nothing less. On Tuesday, Biden made his plans official. The slick online video and subsequent comments didn't change voters' minds, at least not yet in public surveys or private chats in Washington. RFK Jr.'s standing in Fox News poll shows him on the eve of Biden's entrance at a staggering 19%. Hardly enough at this point to do any real damage to Biden, but sufficient to be a piece of gravel in Biden's loafers. Let me just uh, add in here for a second. There was another poll, which I showed on the show a couple of days ago, the Emerson poll, which came out after that Fox News poll, which actually had RFK Jr., I believe at 21%. So he was even higher. It was 21 or 24%, if I remember correctly. But what we have to remember, even though they're saying that 19% is hardly enough to do anything at this point, just remember that even Bernie Sanders was not polling at that percent. Not at this point. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go on a little bit more. Now the fact that roughly one in four Democrats are pulling for someone other than Biden doesn't matter all that much on its own. But it may be an early sign of troubles to come, even if RFK Jr. never poses a serious threat to Biden securing the party's nomination. Kimity, Kimity, <laughs> Kennedy does his best among women, white women, Specifically, and a nagging 15% of people who voted for Biden in 2020 are now backing his upstart challenger. Listen to how they refer to the people who voted for Biden but don't support him anymore. They call them nags. They're nagging. Nagging. You know, it's they're a thorn in the DNC side. How dare you have a difference of opinion? How dare, dare you want someone else? How dare you support another person running in this race instead of the incumbent president? When the Democratic Party talks about democracy, the idea of democracy that they have is you shut up, you do what we tell you to do, and you vote for the Democratic Party. And you only vote for establishment Democrats. You don't put your support behind progressive Democrats, anyone further than progressive Democrats, you put your support and your energy behind the establishment status quo milk toast candidate. So their idea of democracy is not this freedom or this right that you're supposed to have to vote for who you want. Their idea of democracy is for you to be quiet and do what they tell you to do. Because if it was really about you voting for who you wanted, then you would be able to vote for independent and third party candidates in an easier way instead of them having to fight to get on the ballot. If it was really about real democracy. Protest votes don't really matter in politics until they do. Even after Hillary Clinton earned enough delegates to become the nominee in 2016. Highlight earned. Did she really earn all those delegates? Did she really earn all those super delegates? When Bernie Sanders won every county in West Virginia and they gave West Virginia to her, the super delegates did? Question the word earned. Enough delegates to become the nominee in 2016, Bernie Sanders supporters continued to cast ballots for him. How dare they? How dare you? How dare you not vote for the candidate the super delegates told you to vote for? This is what it's really about. I see your comment too, Jay. How dare you voice your opinion? Exactly. How dare you? The nerve of these people. And one caucuses in Montana and North Dakota and still racked up between 21% and 49% of the votes in five other contests, even after it was obvious the nomination was not his. So what? <laughs> they kill me with this. They kill me with this. Oh, dear God. 
Clinton to these days believes that how Sanders chose to wind up his own campaign and back hers ultimately cost her votes in the general. See how they just lie. Clinton till this day believes that how Sanders chose to wind down his own campaign and back hers ultimately cost her votes in the general. How many times have I showed you the video on the show of Bernie Sanders telling his supporters to support Hillary Clinton after it was all done? How many times I showed you that video when he was in Philadelphia and he said, we got to back Hillary Clinton because we can't get Donald Trump. And he was booed. His supporters booed him. The Times article here is actually going to pretend like Bernie Sanders didn't go around this country trying to help Hillary Clinton win. And Hillary Clinton still does that too, by the way. She's still talking about that. She's a sore loser. <laughs> Eight years before she lost to Trump, Clinton's earlier White House bid continued to pick up support. 42% in Montana, 55% in South Dakota, 68% in Puerto Rico, even after, even after it was clear she couldn't earn the majority of pledged delegates. But her convincing endorsement of Barack Obama took the sour grapes out of enough of her loyalists <laughs> to help Obama win and her to become his top diplomat. That's because she was next in line to run. That's because Hillary Clinton is the status quo. She's a part of the status quo. She's a Goldman Sachs candidate. She is the DNC's dream. So of course she's going to play by the rules. Of course she told people to go ahead and get behind Barack Obama because she knew she'd be next in line. You go ahead and you go ahead, Barack, and I'll come in right after you. I pat your back, you pat my back next go round. Isn't that what happened? Didn't she come in after? She ran after, right? Boy, I tell you. There are plenty other examples of protest votes amounting to early warning signs, though. In 2004, John Kerry effectively captured the nomination on March 11th before 21 contests had even been held. Kerry continued with the pro former March picking up between 27% and rival John Edwards home turf of North Carolina. I remember that. And even on the final day of balloting only 92% in New Jersey where Dennis Kucinich had an odd ball base. Yeah, they have to be odd. Why do they have to be odd? You see how this works? So what they're trying to get to is this. Even though I told you the DNC is not going to let RFK Jr. become the nominee, even if that does not happen, what they're afraid of is that he may garner enough support and that his supporters may do what some of the Bernie supporters did and not show up and back Joe Biden in the end. And if that happens, then the Republican nominee could actually win. That's what happened in 2016 and Trump won but I don't blame the Bernie supporters. I blame the fact that Hillary Clinton did not, did not choose to speak to people in the Rust Belt. She did not choose to seek the needs of the working class people in this country. She was also very prudish. She was such a prude. We called them, we called them deplorables. You know, this snobby, uh, elitist, snarky, Goldman Sachs uh, standard candidate does not speak to the average working class person in this country. You don't. You speak for people like you and people who hang out with you. And that was a turnoff. That was a turnoff, not just to Bernie supporters, but to some people who honestly didn't care which way or another and were not going to vote, but chose to vote for Donald Trump because he did not speak to them in that way. So they're calling it now. They're already saying that RFK Jr. could be a problem for Joe Biden still if he continues to garner support. She's Black said, like I said before, RFK and Marianne Williamson are basically raising money for the DNC. 
Heartlands Media in the house says, do not trust the DNC. Mika says, Bernie worked harder for Clinton than she did, right? Thank you for the super chat, Terry. Sabby, you rocked at May Day at Boston Common. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you. I'll take those comments on Rockfin and then we'll go to this story with Noam Chomsky. Oh boy. Thank you for the tip on Rockfin, Anna. Where's the part where they still haven't released the Iowa 2020 primary totals? F, Alphabet, and the DNC. Thank you for the tip, Roger. When governments fear the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. Thomas Jefferson, I can't say that word on here, uh, the slaveholding founder, father, founding father, oh yeah, and third president, also, people with integrity won't get picked if they choose you, question their integrity, support party abolition, and run citizen-initiated constitutional amendments to disappear parties, and this goes away. That is something that you could be doing right now locally in your areas. 